Hey, uh, I'm hoping the hardy dies shut up. We've got hardy dies, crows, and a sounds like a sawmill next door. So um, I just wanted to make a really quick video because I know a bunch of people who work with these little various substances in these little containers that have this rim, this anti-spill rim around the edge. But you've often got to pour stuff out of them and you're not going to use the whole thing at once. And I find it just makes the biggest, gloopiest, most disgusting and wasteful mess right here. Because as soon as you close it, this all starts to drip through here. And then with some of the things, it dries in there. Or you just have this gloopy mess and you've got to try and get in there with like an earbud. I think the Americans call them just Q-tips. I don't know why they're called Q-tips in America, but you guys have names for things that I don't understand. Um, so what I do is I actually cut just by the um, by the poor spot, by the by the little bit where you're you've already got a little gap for getting the lid off, and I just trim the trim the ridge off. Like I'm hoping you can see in this. Um, yeah, I'm due for a phone upgrade at some point, but it's. I'm in the middle of yet another studio move, so like one logistical debacle at a time. Yeah, so now I'm going to do a little demonstration. I'm just going to pour um, for this. I'm busy doing another layer of silicon. So tear the scale. Get my little palette knife. Uh, I really like palette knives for um, pretty much everything that I'm going to be mixing in a cup because they clean super easily. They're slightly flexible. They're designed for scraping around edges. They're designed to be pretty nimble. They've got these various different kinds of tips and sizes. So I know a lot of people who are using silicon use sticks and then chuck them, but I've just seen so much waste with sticks because it leaves a gunky mess inside the cup, leaves a gunky mess on the stick and you'll see um, I basically end up with so little mess. I'll take some photographs and add them. Okay, so I'm just going to tear that because I managed to screw it up. Um, my hands are on the wrong side now. Let's do it backwards. I want to get 100 grams. I work in metric. And that should be just over a hundred. I'm probably going to end up with like 120, 110. And you can see, I, because I'm right at the beginning of the pour, still got a bit of spillage over the edge here, but it's really not as bad as it would have been if I had that little ridge to clean up. And I'm not going to end up with drippy silicon on everything, and I'm not going to end up with a whole lot of waste. So yeah, I've gone on 150 there because I was pouring backwards and it was the first pour and that's always a little bit kind of clumsy. So, yeah, I mean, just clean that up. And you can see, first of all, just how nicely this um, palette knife cleans up. You know, there's so little waste on that. There's so little waste over there. And then I just take a little bit of this bog roll, toilet paper for the rest of you. Um, I don't know what everybody, all your countries call this. And just uh, wipe that so it doesn't make everything else hideously sticky. Because I try not to combine too many of the substances with each other. Now I don't use a, um, I don't use gloves terribly often. Um, unless I'm working with something truly heinous like polyester resin. Even then, I generally don't get very much on my hands. Um, the reason I don't use gloves as often as perhaps a lot of the health and safety people would say I should, a lot of these substances are not actually that dangerous. And if you know which parts of them are dangerous, then you can just use the other ones pretty safely. So silicon itself is... Where earth did I put the lid? Um, okay, there's the lid. So, like, yeah, so that's pretty clean. But um, the silicon itself is pretty 
pretty inert. I mean, it doesn't really interact too much with biological systems. The, um, the catalyst, this is the catalyst I'm going to use. So I'm close on 150 there. Um, I'm on 141, so I'll just pour out 15 of the catalyst. But um, the catalyst is pretty, pretty harmless as well. I mean, I try not to get the catalyst on me also because it's quite expensive. Uh, well, no, actually, this catalyst is quite cheap. Um, well, I don't know. For the weight, I guess it's quite expensive. So I need 14 in there. Um, the thixotrope, so the stuff that makes this kind of more goopy so that you can get a thicker layer on, the liquid thixotrope, is really, really pretty carcinogenic. It's not good for you at all. So I try not to get that on me. And I'll wear gloves if I'm using the thixotrope. But the silicon itself and the catalyst are, I mean, they're not bad guys. Um, same with polyester resin. I mean, it's an irritant, but it's not actually that bad. The thing that's bad with polyester resin is this um, PEK, um, I want to say KEXP, -E but that's my favorite webcomic, um, <laughs> MEPK, um, methyl ethyl. Me methyl ethyl peroxide peroxy mek hmm I'll have to look it up um, I usually know it like I actually usually know the proper thing but anyway uh, I will when I'm done with this I'll show you how I clean up the cup and how little's left. So I thought I would actually, while I'm, while I'm here, I'd show you, if I can get this right, I'll show you some of the mixing process. Oh, I'm sorry about the noises. That's going to sound awful. I'm going to have to learn some better video editing skills so that I can make up for some of the hideous noises um, and ridiculous explanations that I give for stuff that you guys don't actually care about, like me trying to remember the names of the various chemicals. Okay, I think you can see down into it. So if I'm if I'm mixing, you can see this, this palette knife actually just cleans the edges super well. So I'm going to just scrape that off on the side there. You can see how little wastage there is. And then when I scrape, I mean, look how clean that is. That's what these things are designed for. They're designed to make a really, really nice clean scrape. So when I mix, I can mix in the same pot with really consistently good results. I don't have to do the two pot mix method at all because I'm just using a tool that's really designed to get into corners. Like when I get down to the bottom of the cup, I can get this tiny little blady point right into that little um, seam and I can pull up all of this untouched silicon beautifully. I mean, look at that. So why mess around with sticks and wastage and just be super inefficient, uh, use up a whole lot of wood, which is not good for the environment, and use up a whole lot of unused silicon, which is not good for your wallet or the environment, and uh, just buy a second hand one of these. I mean, you can get them from art shops, you can ask around if Friends have kind of art supplies they're not using. Very often people are sort of sitting with a little painting box in a cupboard that belonged to, you know, their great aunt or something. And there's a palette knife in there that they have no idea, they've got no plan to use it. So, um, you know, um, I'm a big fan of environmentally conscious scrounging. Uh, dig things up. And, uh, I mean, look at that. Almost no time. It's beautiful. It's really well. It's not completely mixed, but it's getting beautifully mixed. And there's so little mess and waste. And I don't need gloves because everything's so tidy and controllable. Yeah, just like get good tools. Get good tools and treat them right. It's a thing my dad taught me that I will never forget. And I try and pass on to everybody is just use good tools. And, uh, and treat your tools right, because your tools are, your tools are basically your entire studio.
I mean, you're the catalyst for the tools, but the tools are, um, they're the thing, you know, they're, the paint is your, your tool, the canvas is your tool. And if you're working with, um, with the wrong tool, it's not a matter of blaming your tools, it's a matter of you picked the wrong damn tool. Uh, you can't take a tire off with a hammer. Well, I mean, I'm sure some people could. Chris Hemsworth probably could. But, um, you know, for us average plebs, that's... Um, I don't know, is plebs still a racist term because it's a couple thousand years old? I mean, if you look at the history of the plebeians and the ways that the Greeks treated them, I know that... They're not technically still a community, and I don't think that there are any people in the world left to identify as plebeian, but um, I think it's actually still a racist term. Just because people have died out doesn't necessarily mean, I don't know. I'll probably still keep using it because it, uh, I'm geeky that way. But I do wonder at what point does a word lose its um, potency as a slur or as a taboo? Or, uh, yeah. Curiosity. Anyway, that's beautifully mixed. I'm going to slap that on the sculpture and then show you how clean the cup is afterwards. Hello. This is just a short to show you... Um, the brush that I use for applying silicon after the first layer. Uh, so I've done about two layers on this, but um, I use this fan brush to slap the silicon on because it's very broad and the silicon doesn't get wasted in between the bristles. It's kind of a, it's a really utilitarian shape for um, picking up a large amount of silicon and then slapping it down over a surface, but it's still able to get into some pretty tight corners because it's actually, it's a pretty small brush. So the, the handle's pretty small. The ferrule, this part is pretty small. So you can get into tight corners if you turn it on its side. It's a, it's a little bit like a chisel, but with this lovely soft edge, you can, uh, can get in and under and, and you can twist it around inside spaces so it's extremely versatile and I just really prefer it as a tool for putting on the silicon because it, uh, it cleans up really well it's super easy to clean even if the silicon dries on it you just run a, a lice comb through it to clean it I'll do a video on that at some point and uh, I mean it just picks up a lot of silicon, kind of has the right pace to it as well. Like different brushes, different tools have different paces. Oh, I've got a little drippy bit here, and I don't like the drippy bits this early on in the mold because they actually just add bubbles and confusion. So I usually just cut them off and leave them on the bottom to add bulk. Um, I won't throw silicon away at this point. Like, it's um, just chuck it in where you know you're going to need extra and where the bubbles aren't going to matter. So I'll be adding more chunky bits later on. Uh, thank you, Robert Tulone. Um, I'll put a link to his channel for giving me the name Chunkies <laughs> and uh, for justifying my rather. Um, I've been I've been kind of scrappy about using them. Like I've always wanted to use them and I've, I've sort of used them but never as efficiently as, as Robert Chalone does and uh, he got me into the habit of doing that so I'm not going to dig this silicon too far into this part of the mold here because I don't want to get too many bubbles caught at this point um, later on it won't matter if there are bubbles but when you close to the skin of the sculpture you can't get bubbles so I apply this um, this is thicker than my initial layer so there will be a couple of little, little bubbles, but they won't be on the surface and they're not going to be large ones, so they're not going to distort and they're not going to trap bits of escaping resin once I do the final pour. But uh, 
yeah, so I just wanted to show how beautifully this um, fan brush works for silicon. Like you dunk it, you spin it around like it's a cheese fondue, and you slap it on. And it just covers so much surface with your silicone. Or with, um, I actually also use it for the polyester. I thicken the polyester up with various thixotropes. And ooh, fix the tropes, thixotropes. Um, and then I use the fan brush to put that on. And because it's a natural bristle, I can clean it all up with um, acetone and not really do too much damage to the bristle, but get all the chemicals off it. But yeah, I haven't put any Thixotrope into this particular batch of, of silicon, so I'm not using gloves, because nothing in here is particularly carcinogenic. Um, I would encourage you to wear gloves if that is what your product tells you to do. Um, Follow your doctor's instructions, please, people, and don't blame me if bad things happen to you because you didn't read the label. I am allowed to be an idiot on my own time because I can see myself. Um, but if you decide to be an idiot because you're listening to me, then, you know, we're both idiots. Don't be an idiot. If you can help it. Mostly I can't help it. Okay, that's enough of me waffling. Okay. The last part of me waxing lyrical about the um, brush and the palette knife. Um, I've pretty much used up most of the silicon in here. So I'm going to clean off my brush as best I can with this. I mean, just it takes off what's really in there. Just, I mean, there's virtually nothing left by the time I'm done. So there's almost no waste. In that brush so that I pop that in the terps in this case it's paraffin um, turpentine paraffin I don't know what the names of those are all over the world um, they're petrochemicals don't think you can get organic versions of oh you can get organic yeah you can get natural turpentine out of pine trees and oranges um, so yeah but I don't know about paraffin um, I use the paraffin because my studio mate doesn't like the smell of the natural turpentine. So we've got grinding and they're still on with the um, sawmill next door. Um, so you can see I've cleaned off the sides of the cup with this palette knife. Look at me go for the bottom. I'm going to try and get this in nicely. Where's my camera? The camera's on that side. Okay. Angles. Angles. So many angles to think about. Okay, watch this. Palette knife gets flat on the bottom and I can actually pick that up. So I can actually lift that whole bottom like a wiper blade. And I just scrape that up to near the edge. Sorry, I'm really trying with the angle here. You'll see there's a little bit of not quite mixed silicon right at the bottom there and we can actually just mix it up on the side of the cup now it might sit very slightly slower but not significantly slower and because we're using a tin cure that's a pretty high quality um, we're not going to end up with weird um, spots that cure too quickly um, or that don't cure at all which is one of my pet peeves of the cheaper silicons. And with some of the platinum ones, I'm, I'm, I've got to be honest, I know that they do the best zero bubble kind of thing with the platinums, but I'm not a fan. They're so fussy. They're such fussy things. I'm, I'm definitely a tin cure fan because I can get away with way more uh, bad behavior in my studio. Um, I can have some of that rubber dust, yeah, uh, natural rubber dust, latex rubber dust in the air from Patrick's work. And it doesn't seem to really put this stuff off from curing, where platinum cure just 
man, that stuff doesn't want to, it, it just doesn't like itself. It doesn't like other silicons. It's extremely antisocial. It's like most of my exes. Um, that is such a 90s joke. <laughs> oh God, such a 90s baby. Okay, um, I'm almost done with this cup and you will see I can basically just reuse it because it's so clean. Look, look at the amount of stuff that I'm managing to get off those edges. That's uh, check this out. See that teeny tiny drip under the edge of the cup? These are not my favorite cups to use. Palette knife just gets up under there, cleans it all up. And I mean, what you don't get, you will be able to just peel off afterwards. But I do not like waste in my studio. Because I've gone through way too much of this stuff. And I have bags and bags and bags of old, just stuff I've had to take out of cups. It's just, I don't like it. So there's one extra drop. I'm going to put that right above this eye, so hopefully that eye goes in. And wipe the end of the palette knife off over there. Now what I'm going to do is, as this sort of finishes curing, you can see all these drippy bits. I will wait for it to get a lot more sticky, and a lot harder, um, and then I'll just push them back into the rest of the model. Um, and then whatever I miss, I can trim off at the end and just lay down on the on the bottom as a as a, a last bit of waste management but I've got pretty good coverage I don't think I got all the bits but for now for this layer um, we're good we're good we're good 